My name is Robin Wilson. I'm a behavioral decision scientist and I'm a professor in the School of Environment and Natural Resources. I grew up on a farm in Northwest Ohio and um, grew up like doing 4-H and raising animals. And it's one of the things I miss the most about living in a city now is that I cannot have a menagerie in my backyard. Actually, this one's pretty easy to answer because I have very distinct memories of a trip my parents took us on when I was probably late elementary, maybe early middle school. And we went on a big two week road trip and we visited Acadia National Park. And I just remember being awed by the landscapes, just like in love with that entire experience. I still have my little like junior naturalist book that I got <laughs> on that trip. Um, and I can still go back to that moment as a moment where, in addition to my love of wildlife and animals and other things, but that that was a moment that really um, probably started my path towards wanting to work in kind of nature and environmental sorts of spaces. So right now, most of my projects are focused on climate adaptation. So I do a lot of work looking at how individuals are managing climate exacerbated hazards. So that could be how uh, forest managers out west are dealing kind of proactively or reactively with wildfire issues. Um, here in the Midwest, my work in that space usually focuses on agricultural conservation and how we deal with too much water, <laughs> which is becoming an increasing concern here, um, not to mention the downstream impacts of that on water quality. So yeah, typically I'm just thinking about like, how are we managing those risks and those uncertainties um, in response to events that are getting more frequent and more severe. One of the things that I really enjoy doing and want to do more of moving into the future is science policy work. So part of why I'm in the School of Environment and Natural Resources versus perhaps in a psychology department or even a communication department um, is that I'm really interested in science translation and making sure that the work I do is being used by managers and policymakers and folks out doing outreach and engagement. I have two very vivid memories of teachers slash scientists, science teachers, whose enthusiasm for science was just like hard to ignore. One was my high school chemistry and physics teacher, who I can remember running and jumping across lab tables as he taught physics because he was just so like enthused by the topic. And then actually a professor at Ohio State in geography who's now at Wisconsin. I think we underappreciate the importance of social science and how we think about and solve environmental problems. And often we feel like we're there representing the, you know, the one token person who can tell you all the things about the human system. <laughs> and so that I think has been one of the biggest challenges is trying to do justice to that when you know your bit of knowledge is just one small piece of it. And then trying to build more appreciation and respect for what social science can bring to those conversations.